Recently we've adopted uh, using cover crops in our rotation. Uh, usually we select uh, different cover crops that are going to help with compaction, protect against erosion, and help manage water. I guess the most common cover crops we've used is turnips and radishes and, and, and um, uh, cereal rye. I guess they're simple and they kind of cover what we want to do as far as reducing compaction and, and managing water. We've used other cover crops like peas or lentils or, or sorghum in a mix to, uh, to graze cattle on. The, the most benefit we probably got was from the radish and the rye and maybe the turnip or the dwarf essex. Uh, the ones that are going to provide a good root structure to, to break up some compaction. Uh, ones that are going to tolerate the salts, which is a concern for us. It's nice to be simple. You can add more to the mix, and if you do add more, you know, something's going to grow. I mean, that's kind of the benefit of raising a more diverse mix. But as you kind of get a little more experience, you kind of know which crops to include in your mix and which ones really didn't provide that much of a benefit. So we, we also include uh, alfalfa in our rotation. Alfalfa is a great crop because it, it's a perennial crop. It has a deep root structure. We're able to bring down our water table. So when we do get rains, our water table is um, deeper in the soil than it would be with an annual crop. It helps flush some of them soluble salts down into the soil profile. So when we do get into a crop annual cropping system, um, we tend to raise better soybeans, better corn, better wheat after we've had um, alfalfa in our rotation. Having a crop that's growing from early spring to late fall and having no tillage is awful tough to do in a, in a no-till. Well, it's awful tough to do in any sort of annual cropping system. So in order to us to get that same benefit off of our uh, annual cropping systems, we need to look at incorporating cover crops. You know, we've been playing around with different rates on our cover crops. Uh, rye is the big one because that's the one that we see over winter and that's the crop that we choose to use in acres that we would like to see spring moisture managed, I guess, um, for that situation. We've used 20 pounds an acre, we've used 60 pounds an acre, 20 pounds uh, to manage our spring moisture probably wouldn't be enough for us. 60 would have been great if it would have been a wet spring, but it, it also um, causes some management issues, um, you know, especially if we're trying to strip till into it. It, it, it. it tends to be a little soddy. If we would have been in a, a situation where we would have just no-tilled into those acres, it would have worked just fine. Yeah, so this is our first year uh, playing around with uh, planting green, as they call it. So that would be having a cover crop that will come back in the spring of the year. We will grow that or we will plant a corn or a soybean or a sunflower crop into those acres. I plan on doing some more again next year. I just, I don't know that it worked the best for us this spring just as dry as we were. I think it can really help me manage my spring moisture when we're too wet in a wet spring. When you can look at uh, increasing your your organic matter, which helps improve your drainage, your water holding capacity, um, improving your soil health, um, reducing weeds, and all the other benefits that it can have. To me, it makes sense to be looking at a system like that. I'm pretty new at trying this, but uh, I certainly think it, it, it has a lot of good benefits. Thank you.